In this video, we're going to be talking about removing suntan lines. Let me just show you the before, and that's the after. So you can see here that I actually fixed for the red tones as well as the suntan, and I made it match the actual tones of her skin. So we're going to start from scratch here to give you an idea of what we did. This image was provided by Leon Johnson, who's a phenomenal photographer, and was able to provide a really great example of what he wanted to fix. And I said, I'll be happy to take a look and show you my methodology and how I use Unify to do that. So the first thing is I'm going to turn all these layers off here and give you an example is we're going to do a two-step process. Number one, we're going to fix for luminosity or the light differences. Then we're going to fix for color. What I mean by that is this. Let me just turn the image black and white for a second. All this was was a solid color adjustment layer set to the color blend mode, and then my opacity was 100. This gives me a really clear black and white view, an accurate uh, black and white view a conversion of the image. And this shows me that this area here is very, very bright. And for example, this area is dark. And if I actually sample this color and paint it over it, it's still not going to look right. So for example, I'll give you how I would do that normally. So I'd have a blank layer like this set to the color blend mode. And then if I paint with a 100% opacity and sample the arm here for a second, and you'll notice as I bring my brush up like this and paint, it's although it's the same color that we've sampled, because it's bright, it's not going to blend in. And that is kind of a problem. And with this, there's so many different tones happening between highlights and shadows that you really need something like Unify that pro provides a gradient map in order for it to work properly. So what I did was very simple. Once I activate my black and white layer again, I have this group that I created and I'll go from scratch here again you can see it blends in. And this is actually really cool because without color, you can see exactly how much to kind of paint in order to blend it in. What I did was I had a blank layer set to a soft light blend mode and I painted white or black with a low flow. So for instance, I took my paintbrush here. Let me just go and um, hit X on or D on my keyboard to reset the colors. And now I have black as my primary and white as my secondary. Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is increase my brush size and drop my flow to around 2 or 3% just so I can see the tones coming through. And then all I did was kind of just paint on the skin. And that's pretty much it. And then that allows you to, you know, darken or brighten any specific area. So if you go too far, for example, just take, uh, hit X on your keyboard to bring the white as a primary color and then just paint like this. Or if you, you know, want to go darken it, hit X, and you just kind of want to paint like this. And, and there you have it. That's kind of how I actually you know, uh, painted that. If you're interested in learning more about a dodge and burn and retouching techniques, please, I'll leave a link to my other educational videos in the description. Um, but let's just move forward for now. The other thing that I did is a bonus here, probably a little bit extra, but I added this curve layer and let me show you what the curve actually looks like. You can see that the points um, are equal from each other, like the area of the highlights I brought up a little bit and the area of the shadows I brought down a little bit, it just adds a bit of contrast. And the mask itself was basically pulled from the work that I did here. So let me just show you if I delete this layer mask really quickly. And once I, let me just turn that off for a second. Once I was able, once I was done with my um, dodge and burn, I basically hit command on my keyboard. I clicked on that layer and it comes up with these marching ends. It shows me that this is the selection that I, well, not accurately, but it shows me uh, indicates that there was a selection made of the work that I did on this specific layer. Once I did that, um, I just added this curves layer here without a mask. And then when well, I held shift and then clicked on the mask option. And then what happens is it adds a black mask with my work already added in. And now it matches perfectly. If it already comes as a mask after you add a curve, you can simply delete it and then do exactly what I did by holding shift and clicking on the mask and it'll do exactly what I did. So now there you have it. I made sure that the dodge and burn work was done and I did some on the face a little bit too, but that was just for fun. Now the next step is going to be the colors. Now how do we fix the actual colors of the tan? So let me just show you from scratch again. This is what I did. I added a couple. The first one was like this and then the second one was manually added for desaturating the skin. Let's go from scratch and show you in the beginning. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that uh, unified group. 
I'll click on another folder. I'll call it Unify just so that we are starting from the beginning. Now, the way that I like to work is the settings themselves are infinite and unify. I just like to make sure that this black mask icon is selected and nothing else is selected, okay? And if you're looking for the best um, settings to use for unify, I'll link that video in the description as well. But for now, just uh, go with me here and just make sure it's set to medium, make sure the black mask is selected and you're good to go. Let's go over to the marquee tool here like this. And my goal now is going to be selecting tones that uh, I think are neutral. Obviously this is not neutral and I don't want this is too red and all this. Skin is also here a bit too orange. So we can do a couple of things. We can select this whole range like this to represent our highlights, our midtones. And if you want to select some shadows, just hold shift on your keyboard and then you can do another selection anywhere else on the image. Now that we have a selection of the tones that represent what you want the rest of the skin to look like, then you want to hit create. And once you hit create, it's going to come up with this layer mask here with a black mask. So now what we're going to do simply is take our paintbrush. And if you want, your opacity might be a different number than this by default. Um, but I'm going to change it to a hundred for just a second. If you like your default opacity to be 100% every time you hit Unify, you can right click on the Create button here and then set your default opacity to whatever you want. Okay, now that I have that done, I'm just gonna start brushing here like this. And my flow is set to 3%, so I'm just gonna bring that to 100 as well and just kind of paint it in like that. Now, one thing you might realize is that it might be too far. It might be like too even. So what you actually want to do here is you want to play with it. So for example, if you feel like the opacity is too strong, and it's too even, just reduce the opacity to around 70%. So it blends in or 60%. So you can see how it blends in much more, much better, I should say. So that is going to be what we do. We just reduce the opacity and kind of paint like that. And I think that is really, really nice. And just like that, I'm able to kind of change the uh, colors. And forgive me if I'm, I'm lost for words here because it does take me back every single time I do it. It's pretty remarkable, actually. You can notice here the tones here perfectly reflect the rest of the body. Now, what's wonderful is that I don't have to do anything else if I want to. However, if you decide that, hey, you know what? Um, I want to tinker with the colors a little bit. There's a couple of things you could do. First, you can take the hue here, for example, and move it left or right to really change, you know, the actual tone. But typically, it does a really good job if you make the right selection. So I'm not going to, you know, touch that very much. You can also change the saturation amount. So if you feel like, you know, you would like it less or more saturated, uh, totally up to you. The other thing you can do is if you go ahead and over here on the bars, you can right click on it. And then you can actually decide, hey, I think I want to uh, change the shadow saturation of the shadows. You can increase that a little bit if it's a little bit too uh, too dull. And the same thing for your mid tones, and uh, and and that's pretty much it. So, you know, I personally don't really touch this unless you know I feel like I need to. But that looks pretty good to me too, and I think that looks really really nice. You can also increase the opacity again to blend it in nicely. I actually think that looks really, really nice. I'm going to go ahead and um, save this because looking back to what I did before, I think I even prefer this more. Obviously, the masking is imperfect here, but you can easily just use a black brush and kind of paint it over like that. Another really quick tip that I want to give you is if you want to make another Unify layer for whatever reason, um, you can just duplicate this and then play with it. Or what I recommend is um, you can also just you know do the same method before but before clicking on create, you want to hold the option key and click create. And then what it does is it makes a second unify loop a layer. And uh, just go ahead and make sure that the first one is enabled again before you continue. And then if you want, you can, you know, paint it anywhere else. The reason why I mention this is because over here on the first one, you notice the opacity was at 83%. However, if there's certain parts of the image you want to take even further, then, you know, you could probably just make another unify layer 
and then go over that specifically. Like, um, I don't know, maybe, for example, like the shoulders you wanted to, or like the arm you wanted to kind of, you know, paint a little bit differently. You could paint over that. And then you just go back to your sliders here and dictate exactly what you're going for. The same thing can be said for maybe the shadows. If you feel like you wanted to, you know, take specific control over that area, you could do that. But in this example, really, I'm just doing it as a, as a means to show that uh, you have secondary control. But yeah, that's it. I think um, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that layer because that's not really necessary. I think the first one did fantastic. So there you go. In combination of these three layers together, I'm able to take what was a really um, sunburned image and kind of bring it back to a skin tone. If it's too far, like I said, just change it. If you want to go further, you know how to do it now. So hope that helped. This is obviously an extreme example, but I thought this was a good one. Now, if you're interested in learning more, I'm going to link a couple of resources in our description. Please check out our group, our Instagram. Also, if you're looking to learn more about Infinite Tools and Infinite Unify and our other products, I will also link that within the description.